Uh, dear Earthmates, uh, today we are visiting Professor Glenn Martin, who is the director of the Earth uh, Constitution Institute. And uh, uh, he is a, a philosopher and an activist. Uh, the term I want to use for such a personality is a philactosopher, which I made up a few years ago. Uh, and uh, uh, Professor Martin, thank you so much for this uh, conversation, for this interview. It's my pleasure. And uh, how did it start? How did you, uh, how um, did the journey start? Well, uh, the World Constitution and Parliament Association was established in 1958 by Philip Isley, his wife, Margaret Isley, and some other people who had been working in the Chicago, USA Chicago offices uh, for world government. And they, they decided that what we needed most of all was an actual constitution for the Federation of Earth. It wasn't just enough to talk about unity or reforming the UN and so on. So Philip Isley made it his uh, destination, his, his goal to get a good constitution written. And he worked for <clears throat> many, many years. Uh, uh, he had a, a, a successful Denver, Colorado based business. And uh, he used the money from that business to organize people from around the world. And they met together uh, many times, but he, they identified especially four large constituent assemblies that were dedicated to writing the constitution for the Federation of Earth, right? And so here's, you know, here's our pocket version of the, <laughs> of the Earth constitution. Uh, I wrote the introduction to it, but I did not write it, right? The, the hundreds of, <laughs> <clears throat> hundreds of <coughs> I think you'll have to edit this out a little bit. Uh, let me get a glass of water uh, if, if it's okay. Derek? Yes, yes please. Oh, I have the same problem. And <clears throat> please. And uh, meanwhile, I'll say a few things <clears throat> for our Earthmates. Um, uh, uh, this uh, notion of planetary civilization has been around. And um, in 2013, I simply wanted to call it Earth civilization. Why not uh, use the uh, name of our planet? And um, uh, I'm delighted uh, to learn that uh, there is this initiative, uh, an organization, organized movement, yes. And um, so uh, I'm happily uh, one of the volunteers. Um, okay. <laughs> yes, wonderful. <clears throat> yes. So Very good. Yes, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so uh, they, they uh, met in, in 1968 in Interlaken, Switzerland. And they elected a drafting committee of 25 persons headed by Dr. Reinhard Ruga of Mexico. And over the next 10, nine or 10 years, this drafting committee worked together to under the guidelines that were set down in 1968 to produce a draft for the constitution. And then they met again in 1977 in Innsbruck, Austria, and went over the constitution that was drafted paragraph by paragraph uh, um, with uh, you know, some changes and, and everybody uh, uh, dialoguing about it and, and making sure it was as good as possible. And then, then they met again uh, two years later. One of the difficulties they ran into was the constitution says, uh, 
this document should be sent out to all members of the United Nations and all the uh, nations of the world uh, um, for uh, the to begin the movement for ratification. They did that, and there was no response. Oh, no response. I mean, uh, we're talking about many thousands of dollars in mailing with uh, Philip Isley had several employees in his two-story headquarters in Denver, Colorado. He had a lot of money to do this, you know, and very nicely done letters and so on. Um, no response. So they met again in Colombo, Sri Lanka in 1979 uh, and uh, discussed what to do, you know, with a world that did not seem interested in uniting and in, in trying to solve its most basic problems, uh, that they knew the problems. They were very advanced thinkers. They knew the problems that the, the same problems we have, only now they're 10 times worse. You know, in, in, 20, in, our, in 2021, they're 10 times worse. The climate is collapsing. Nuclear weapons are being refined ever more faster uh, delivery systems and so on. They knew these were the problems then, and they said, we've got to do something to solve these problems. <clears throat> no response. So in, uh, in Colombo, Sri Lanka, they did not make any more changes to the constitution, but they did issue a declaration that said, it's going to have to be the people who ratify it, the people of earth, since the institutions, the governments, the multinational corporations, so they're not interested. They don't have the vision, right? Uh, and uh, so they issued this declaration called the people must uh, ratify the constitution. Uh, and then uh, through, they, they held the first session of the Provisional World Parliament in 1982 in Brighton, England, at the famous Royal Pavilion there, a very elegant circumstance and people from all over the world came. And, and uh, the, the Provisional World Parliaments have been held under the authority of Article 19 of the Constitution, uh, which says, which really says the people have the right to do it. They, you know, it, Article 19 gives various, um, it recognizes the various ways that it can be ratified that are specified in detail in Article 17, but it also, Article 19, says that we, because the crisis in the world is so severe, we need to be uh, starting it now. We just can't wait, you know, for people to get around to ratifying it. Uh, so the provisional world parliaments are part of that initiative, starting it now. And, uh, 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 but then they met once more uh, through the dialogue about the constitution and so on. They met once more in Troy of Portugal in 1991. And uh, there they made a number of small changes in the wording. They didn't change the substance of it, but sm small changes in the wording to make it more universal, more accurate and so on. And they declared that it was finished in in Troy of Portugal. Uh, it was ready for ratification, final ratification. And, and so since that time, the World Constitution and Parliament Association and the Earth Constitution Institute, and I, they work together and I'm president of both these organizations, um, they, uh, we have been working to get the word out, to get more and more translations into different languages, to educate the people of Earth about the need to do this and to actually lay the groundwork for ratification. Uh, and uh, it just so happens that you, as you may know, Tarek, uh, the uh, next session of the Provisional World Parliament is, is, up, is coming up next month in uh, New Delhi, India. Uh, in spite of the terrible COVID situation worldwide, uh, we, we see the urgent need to go ahead with it. And it'll be actually in person and online. So 
participants will be there online, but we will have a significant number of people actually meeting in the venue, in prestigious venue that we have reserved in New Delhi. Um, uh, India is a special place for this because India has these immense traditions of universality, <clears throat> brotherhood of all human beings and so on, and, and great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi who have, uh, have uh, pioneered this kind of global vision. So, so uh, you know, the, I joined the organization in 1995. I am a philosopher and I, uh, I was teaching philosophy at Radford University beginning in 1985. And as a philosopher, I was uh, part of an organization called the International Philosophers for Peace and another organization called Concerned Philosophers for Peace. And I, so I was writing and thinking about world peace. How does it to achieve, be achieved? And I, <clears throat> in my writing and thinking, I wrote articles about this, the need for spiritual awakening among human beings, the, the sense that we're all human, we're all uh, children of the divine force and so on. Uh, I wrote about the need for economic transformation that under the current world economic system, we are destroying the planet, the environment, and so on. And I wrote about the need for uh, political freedom and political transformation. But it all these elements that I was working with in trying to develop a coherent philosophy of human liberation, I didn't realize there was something missing until 1995 when one of the magazines that I uh, uh, received, at that time, everything is, it was in paper, but one of the magazines that I subscribed to called In These Times from Chicago, um, it had a full page ad for the Earth Constitution. And suddenly it occurred to me, yes, this is what we need. We need to unite humanity under a genuine democratic Earth Constitution. And I uh, immediately called world headquarters in Denver uh, and they invited me to come out and see the operation, which I did the next year. And, and from that time on, I've been working with, uh, with uh, this movement. You know, I, I think it's, and my books, that, my subsequent books that I've written, uh, beginning with Millennium Dawn in 2005, I've written, now 12 books my my new one just just came out in july uh it's called the it's hard to see on here isn't it uh every <clears throat> the earth constitution solution designed for a living planet and uh um, well, okay. yeah and uh so it, it goes into the environmental crisis, which I've studied. I've studied the literature and so on of uh, the environmental experts and, and it's very serious. And I make the argument that we will, we're in the process of making ourselves extinct by the end, by within a hundred years, we'll, we, the, the earth might uh, not be habitable for higher forms of life unless we, unite under the earth constitution which is green from the beginning to end it, it is designed for a living planet designed for ecologicals which includes everything you you you're not going to solve the environmental crisis unless you solve the problem of militarism and war the problem of sovereign nations recognizing no effective law above themselves the problem of human rights violations, which take place all over the world. These are an integral feature. They all need to be solved together. And that's what the Earth Constitution does. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, just a brief personal note, uh, why I am so much delighted uh, uh, about all this uh, is uh, in 1968, when I was 15, I considered myself to be an, uh, a world citizen and to live, uh, work for justice. 
and uh, in 1969, uh, I criticized uh, the United Nations for failing to uh, uh, to do justice, uh, whatever. And then, uh, um, and uh, uh, how uh, I, I agree that we need uh, an Earth Federation. I agree that we need this. Uh, constitution. Uh, these are uh, vital and necessary, really, uh, steps. Uh, thank you as an Earthmate uh, and congratulations. And meanwhile, uh, I've been thinking for decades um, uh, and uh, because I'm a poet, I'm interested in words uh, and uh, I've been trying to find simple formulas that can be easily grasped um, uh, towards the chain reactions, fruitful chain reactions. And uh, one of them is calling, addressing people, earthmates. Uh, and then at the end of a presentation or speech, I enjoy saying, we are together. I don't say bye, I don't say, mm -hmm. uh, we are together, and uh, uh, and uh, ethically, uh, I too am on this planet. I too am responsible. This is my worldview, as simple as possible, uh, because uh, there 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 are huge theoretical works. But then there are billions of people who have no access to those works and who, who need to grasp the basics. And we should be able to uh, give some messages as succinctly as possible while, of course, improving the theoretical wealth, etc. So these are all complementary efforts. And um, I, I consider myself an Earth Civilization volunteer. And um, uh, organizations are vital, uh, such as the Institute and World Parliament. And I'm in favor of saying Earth Parliament, by the way, uh, emphasizing because we all have, uh, humans have had different uh, visions of world, what a world is, but Earth is, a, is, a, is the name of our planet and it's more scientific. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why Earth, uh, constitution is wonderful and Earth Federation is wonderful and uh, and uh, the, the Constitution itself uh, uses the word world for for the Parliament right it sets up a provisional world Parliament yes, but it is it may be better to say Earth Parliament I agree I agree but so, uh, you know we're follow, we follow the Constitution you know the 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 thing about this, the, and, and this is, a, I think, a powerful thing. Uh, they they uh, declared the Constitution final and ready for ratification in 1991, as I was saying. Uh, and the Article 19 allows for creating provisional world parliament now and start laying the groundwork for the ratification, final ratification and so on. Um, people, so we have had, uh, you know, people from many countries, including myself, are personal signatories, right? And people can, you know, be a personal signatory just by going on the website now. It used to be you had to sign something and send it in, but now it's digital. I have also uh, signed, thank yeah, you. Yeah, good. And, uh, and, uh, of course, there's different people understand by being personal signatories different things. Some people say, "Well, I just affirm the idea of this or whatever," but but a number of us uh, agree with Immanuel Kant, uh, who first really stated this in in uh, the 18th century, yes. that it is immoral not to live under the, the authority of democratically legislated laws. And 
no nation in the world does that, no citizen in the world does that because we live in a chaos of some 200 sovereign nation states that refuse to recognize any enforceable law above themselves. And Kant pointed out that this is immoral, his essay on perpetual peace, famous 18, 1795 essay. And uh, it's immoral to live in this state of nature, this chaos. You know, the fact that so Russia has nuclear weapons pointed at us that, that they could launch at any time, that is Im that's an immoral condition. We are obligated, I believe, to end that condition. And the only way to end that condition is to, is to recognize real law. So people like myself take the Earth Constitution as the law of the Earth. Mm -hmm. And it, we recognize that it supersedes in a, in a moral and, and pragmatic way, it supersedes all existing constitution. It supersedes the Constitution of the United States. Right, you know, uh, uh, and uh, to this means that uh, when we hold sessions of the Provisional World Parliament, we are really coming together. It's a it's an, a strange kind of a strange legal situation because we're coming together as delegates, as legislators under the authority of the Earth Constitution, even though it's not recognized worldwide yet. And uh, we, during the 14 sessions of the Provisional World Parliament that we've had so far, we have passed a, a, a host, some 67 really fine world legislative acts. The very first one passed in Brighton, England in 1982, abolish nuclear weapons and weapons of mass destruction. <clears throat> uh, we don't have the enforcement mechanism, but it's only, it only makes sense how stupid these, we these weapons are, how stupid it is for these nations to keep developing them and so on, wasting this money when we have these terrible human problems that we should be using that money to address, like climate crisis and so on. So. You know, so this is this is what we're doing, and, and one of the things uh, that the the Constitution is a parliamentary system, which means that uh, the ultimate authority is not the world executive, certainly not any world police or anything like that. The ultimate authority is the world parliament, and uh, uh, the world parliament is composed of three houses. The House of Nations, so all existing nations will be able to send a representative there. Not as, you know, they don't send a representative as absolutely sovereign nations that recognize no law above themselves because that's not, a, it couldn't be a parliament. They have to send a representative to make laws which will encompass themselves, just like states within the United States send a representative to Congress which are going to make laws that encompass the whole of the United States, not just uh, other places. And uh, uh, so it's a federal system, right? And uh, but so there's a House of Nations, a House of Counselors, 200 people selected from around the earth for their wisdom and their insight and so on. And their job is to represent the whole, the whole of the planet. And uh, they have a unique role within this world parliament. Uh, but then there's the House of Peoples, 1,000 electoral districts, roughly equal by population worldwide. So everywhere on earth, no one on earth is not represented, right? Everywhere on earth, someone's in one of these electoral districts and they work together to create, uh, to uh, elect a representative to come to the world parliament and represent them, which means that for the first time in human history, the people of earth are represented. The people of earth are directly represented. Their voice is the dominant voice in the world parliament. 
if all nations are sending to um, this, there may be 300 representatives. Um, it, uh, there's 200 uh, counselors. There's there's a thousand people from the electoral districts, right? The people of Earth are for the first time recognized in their sovereignty, and because of this, they have the sovereign right to protect the environment, to end war, to universally protect human rights. None of these things are possible under the present world system. True, and I agree with you that we should be able to transcend capitalism. Yeah. And uh, I enjoy saying that Marx was not an anti-capitalist, he was a post-capitalist, because yes. you can be anti-capitalist from even a worse situation. <laughs> So the, the idea is, should be to transcend it. And, uh, uh, and uh, these, are, these are vital. And uh, all important steps begin with a handful of people uh, in history. And, uh, but I like that extra statement of Marx. Uh, I think it was his, uh, the, when the right time comes for an idea, uh, you know, nothing can stop it or things like that. And thanks to uh, uh, technological advancement, um, uh, ideas, if they are good, if our ideas are really good for the humanity, which I think, which we think they are, th unlike fascists, we trust on the whole, the, the general wisdom of the people. We, we trust that uh, uh, people who, who are being misled will be able to understand yeah. and join forces. Um, uh, Professor Martin, <clears throat> uh, what else would you like to say um, uh, to uh, our uh, Earth-based uh, well, yeah. In response to what you were just saying, um, uh, we we have members in Africa, in South America, Southeast Asia, very poor. Some of them very poor countries, right? And uh, and I've been to our. I travel around a lot to our chapters, and you know, to offer support and so on, uh, and in poor countries like Ghana and Togo and West Africa, where we have chapters, uh, uh, the people coming together in the meeting, it, you know, it, it like breaks my heart how poor they are, right? The, the whole country is in this condition where, you know, like one of their, one US dollars worth 7,000 of their, you know, sephas, <laughs> and it's like, uh, uh, it very life is difficult, very difficult, uh, and and so I I ask them, and I do you know I do this wherever I, I'm meeting with uh, people. I ask them what what would they like? What if they could identify five things that they th they want that they thought would be good? What would they be? And they and I have them often write down a piece of paper what these are and so on, and. You know, it, it's it's amazing the, that the responses in different parts of the world are very similar. They want education. They want decent food, clothing, and shelter. They don't talk about wanting to be rich or wanting to cons be a consumer or wanting a fancy house. They want the basic necessities. Right, they, 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 you know, they want a life that's meaningful and, uh, and in relationships and community and so on. The, the, this is what the people of Earth want, right? They want a, an environment that is healthy, that sustains them. And uh, uh, the, uh, the Marxist idea, right? That, that from the people arise the truth I think is, is very valid, as you're pointing out, right? That, that uh, um, now, 
one of the things that critics have said is that, oh, the Earth Constitution is top down. It's imposing something, but it really is not. It's it, you, you, the bottom up, if they ratify, how, the, the, the ratification process in Earth in Article 17 requires everybody voting. Right? If a nation ratifies it, a head of a nation ratifies it, signs it, President Biden signs it or something, within six months, it has to be put as a referendum to the entire people of the nation. Right? Uh, so nations, it has to be democratically ratified, and that, which means that the ground up is saying with perfect rationality that we need a global public authority that represents us. Never in history have people really been represented uh, in the so-called democracies uh, as they exist today. It's capital that's represented. The rich are represented. The rich dominate. You know, it, it's amazing. We just had this uh, election in Virginia, you may know, where the Republican uh, the really rabid, radical, uh, right-wing Republican won the governorship. And the, the, the hidden money, the millions of dollars that came into his campaign from wealthy contributors, uh, they also contain, they also contributed to the third party candidate, right? So you had a Democrat, a Republican, and the wealthy contributors recruiting to the Republican and the third party candidate so that they could manipulate the election in order to get their choice. You know, this is not democracy, right? This is oligarchy, the, the rich manipulating things in their own fa favor. That's true, that's true. And uh, uh, thank you so much. Um, we are not putting a full stop period with just a little comma <clears throat> for further uh conversations thank you so much uh to you personally and to everybody who has been working uh along this path uh we, we are together uh, we're together thank you so much